Welcome to the Teach for Justice podcast. We are very excited to have John Carippo here. If you've listened from the beginning, you heard a little bit about his um, background and biography. Um, and so I want to go ahead and uh, get right to it here. John, thanks for being here. Um, we we're talking about edge protocols, and we are talking about this idea that you can give us some frames and some strategies here so that we work less and are more effective. And, you know, I came into just full disclosure for everybody. I went to a two day training here and I go into most trainings, super skeptical. I've been uh, teaching for 20 years. I've, I was an athletic coach for 30 years and I feel decent about what I'm doing, but also if I'm signing up for a two day thing on the summer, right? I want it to be worth my while. And and so maybe I came in a little hot. I don't know. <laughs> but um, what really said what I, all I needed to know about John was before the second day started, he, he came up to me. I thought he was coming up to somebody behind me because I'd never really met him before. <laughs> but I was like, oh, I, I got to get out of the way here. He said, hey, I just want to thank you for asking hard questions. And I I can see from your perspective that there might be a solid contingent who is either already bought in or just not because you're the expert, your name's on the book, right? You're up front with the microphone, right? The guru. You're that the guru. makes me uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> and uh, so they're, they might not challenge it. And, and I didn't mean to come off challenging or overly oh, it wasn't aggressive. bad. Right, no, you know? It wasn't bad. You that's why I said I was hard excited. Time. Actually, I was yeah. excited. I was like, well, wait like, a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you know, are you guys saying that I don't need to do uh you know, in that case it was think pair share in that moment we were talking about um uh Iron Chef or or, or Cyber Sandwich, but let's uh let's get to it. So some of these sound and feel like effective strategies and teachers like myself have been using already. For example, cyber sandwich feels like uh, a, a lot like think pair share, but with a cooler name. Am I loving cyber sandwich just because you guys are really good at naming stuff? Well, that that's part of the juice. Uh, okay. We always try to come up with a name so that when the kids, when you say it's time to do book a kucha, or Iron Chef, because they're like, oh, I love this one. So you're right on that part. We want to make sure that when the teachers are saying we're going to do a thing, the kids are like, oh, my gosh, this is so fun. We haven't done this in a couple of weeks. I love this one. We want that piece, right? The other piece is the reason it seems familiar compared to Think, Pair, Share is it's the same basic flow. There's a, there's a strategic uh, concept that we're asking kids to work on. Uh, there's a conversational element. And then there's a questioning element. Uh, my co-author actually uh, is the one that created the cyber sandwich. And her goal was, she said, what if we could have the kids read independently and take notes, which guess what? In history class, that's the thing we do. But what if we could add a twist to it so it was fun? So you've got eight minutes to read this pe uh, uh, portion of an article or, or textbook. Take some notes. And this is key on this one too. Uh, you the notes can be any format. You can give them four questions to find. If you teach Avid, it could be Wicker style. Um, if it, you know, if you want to say, uh, let's look for milestones or whatever style of notes. Now, once the kids have their notes done, they get to talk all they want about what they found, and so it creates a much better um, student experience because they've actually just learned something to talk about. When I ask kids, what do you want to know about? volcanoes they're like what uh okay why do they blow up they don't have a bunch of background knowledge i don't do a lot of direct instruction until the kids are finished with their notes and then we have each pair answers but this is the teach for justice part i hate the popsicle stick thing uh -huh. because you're basically blackmailing kids in a very simple sense listen to me or i might embarrass you that's the unspoken piece Listen to me or you might get embarrassed. I'm not cool with that. I don't want to do that to kids. So the twist in a cyber sandwich is 
we know up front every team is going to share something. It could be the bazinga, which is the oh my gosh moment. It could be just three facts because you're just not feeling it today and you want to just give me three facts. Right. Or you can tell me, uh, you can ask me a question. Like, after we read this, we're still blown away by, or could we do this tomorrow? So there's equity. Everybody they told answer. us they told us the popsicle sticks were equitable. That's well, that was us. true. That was true in the 1960s. <laughs> uh, at that time, they also told us that the Chevy Corvair was a safe vehicle. They told us <laughs> Vietnam was a winnable war, and they told us that the president would never lie. <laughs> Before okay, Nixon, fair enough. If you're thinking Trump, I wasn't thinking that. I'm thinking <laughs> no, Nixon. no, me. Uh, <laughs> and the point of that is things have changed. Okay. Things have changed. We've we've evolved since then. The last piece of a think pair share is for kids to take a just four or five minutes and write a neat little paragraph about what you've learned. And again, that's just a container. I could say summarize what you've learned, third person, go. I could say write a response to literature. I could give them because we were talking about think pair, I mean um DBQs. I could give them some things that start to lead to a DBQ. I could say write it in third person or first person. I can have all kinds of fun with that little paragraph. It's about a 25 to 30 minute lesson. Uh, and what's my prep if I want to do it tomorrow? Yeah, they're doing a bunch of work. They're doing a bunch yeah, of work. Yeah, they're doing a ton of work. And I'm only really grading the last part. And I'm you and I were talking about this, about not grading, grading. I'm walking around while they're working, making sure they're finishing. And if they screw it up today, I'm tracking very carefully what things they're struggling with. Tomorrow we'll do a mini lesson to help eliminate some of that. And then we're going to get right back to it. And we're going to do cyber sandwich in my class 30 ish times this year, 50 ish times. So my prep is low. The kids just keep getting better and better. And I know you talked to Dr. Petrie today. He's having huge success with this in AP classes. Yeah, and I teach AP, and and you know yeah. one of the book's takeaways, and, and one of Scott's ideas is, uh, those are the guys you might get to rocking and stacking with a little quicker, to Correct. increase the rigor. Yes, AP, I can pick up that tempo. Now the other piece that I love because I love learning with people, um, Doctor Petrie has taught me the lowest scoring section of the AP test. He probably mm -hmm. talked about this. Making connections is only 15% right. So let me do a quick rewind. I'm asking kids to read an article with no presuppositions. I'm asking kids to talk to kids and come to a conclusion about something. If I know that AP kids score the lowest on adding, uh, on making connections, I'm just going to turn Cyber Sandwich into a three times a week connections activity. Yeah. If I can get my kids 80% right on making connections, boom, there's my growth. I can keep all the other the same and work this in. It's 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 just it's a solid toolbox. It's it's the toolbox yeah. has the best tools, the most multifunctional tools. Right. But it's a toolbox that's a great anybody analogy. can carry around. So for a lot of people um, you're going to love this one. Uh, for a lot of people, education, they think they're buying a tough shed. They think they're buying a kit and it will have how many outcomes? Like I'm going to buy all these parts. I'm going to have a six page manual that I hate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, the, but then that's all I can build is a tough shed. What's awesome with protocols is I've got a shop. Right. And when I have a shop, I don't order, I don't order kits. I order lumber. That's it. And I put my own thing together and your tough shed might be very nice, but mine's two story. Mm -hmm. And I can do those little things like that. And that's, I think a really, a really, really big thing. Well, okay. So for my school, I teach at a school that has its share of English language learners. Um, yeah. uh, uh, emerging bilinguals, right? This mm -hmm. group is our focus at my school. Is this aligned with my school's goals of reaching this particular group? What if I told you the first school I taught in had 48% transiency? Wow. Which if anybody's listening and they don't know what that means, that means basically by January, you have 
half of your class is a new group of kids. <laughs> so tough. I, uh, if you, have you been teaching Alfredo long enough to remember what Sadai is? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm, so I'm on I'll, year 22 at this point. So I'm going to go all AP on you right now. Okay. I'm going to make connections. Sadai is about creating a set of instructions that everybody can grasp. Correct? Mm -hmm. So classic education is about creating a task that only some kids will finish. If you don't believe me, look it up. The Victorian model was to use school to separate managers mm -hmm. from workers. I don't do that. Um, my football coach taught me at Fresno State uh, that if a class has 600 kids and only six are getting A's, that's on the professor. Because if you're a football coach and you got 100 guys on the team and only three are getting A's, you're not going to be a football coach. You're out. Nope. As a coach in any sport, the goal is to make the team as great as it can. I think I might have said this one in Laguna. Uh, my dad's famous quote, there are no great orchestras, there are only great conductors. Mm -hmm. And this is the part where we're going to get to hard questions because people are going to start saying things like, yeah, but John, what if an F is the grade they earned? Mm -hmm. um, what if their parents aren't helping? What if they refuse? No, dude, my job is to get my group of people from here to there and grow them all as much as I can. And you're not going to do that by lecturing and worksheeting because as soon as you do that, 60 to 80% of your kids are out. They are out. There's no creative element. There's no collaborative element. There's no, um, there's no real learning and kids are very aware of that. That's why they take pictures of first period worksheets and send them the third period for the cost of Starbucks because mm -hmm. nobody cares. And if anybody's thinking, nah, that's crazy, John. <laughs> Did you read every page in your master's book, Alfredo? Did oh, you no. read every page? Absolutely. No. You know why? You wanted the degree. You didn't want the work. And so yeah. my job is to create a classroom where the vibe is we're all growing. And that really freaks teachers out. But you got to remember, it's just a contrary point of view. It's a construct, if you would. Uh, if you've ever watched The Matrix, uh, Neo thought he had it going on apparently not right so you gotta look at things from the reverse side uh so over half my classes are high school ap classes um aren't aren't these kids a little mature a little bit too mature for you know some of this stuff the cyber sandwich and sketch okay. and tell another great question um what's the upper age limit on a venn diagram I don't know. I don't think there is one. Okay. Like, you can do Venn diagrams uh, at, the, at the Pentagon, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. So done them. So I tend to teach like fifth through sixth grade. So we're cutie pieing it up a little bit. But again, referencing Dr. Petrie, I've got another friend, Robert Mayfield. Shout out. Woo, woo, Robert. Robert's got his, he's got his AP kids 20 points higher than the state average. Robert is grading nothing at home. And he routinely has 100% engagement. Nice. So what what I'm going to do with these with high school kids is I'm going to play down the cutie pie names. and I'm going to play up the collaboration and I'm going to play up the content. I'm going to play up the learning. Um, we have really never had much pushback with kids saying this is too juvenile. In fact, we have a bunch of people that do this in college classes. Okay. And you know what people say? This is a hell of a lot more fun than listening to you yap your trap for an hour. Or watch a movie. I had a yeah, college class. Oh, same thing. I had a college history class where they were just, the guy just showed full movies um, yeah, every time. Like, what is that, bro? I, I mean, will say, though. Wrong, I love the movie, the movie <laughs> Selena. I cry at the end every time. But that's not what I want out of my Spanish teacher. Right. I want to be taught. Yeah, it wasn't a film class. It was a history class. I will say, though, I did notice that if you're going by average age of the teachers that were at Laguna beach for two days, that was a veteran group on the whole. Yeah. I would say, you know, what's interesting about that. They have seen the future and they're not impressed. Like, yeah. They've yeah. been doing this long enough that they're like, bro, I'm out. I, yeah. I And you're right. We just did a, a mini masterclass for um, teachers and we called it the new teacher mini masterclass. 
And what was crazy was that we had probably 70% of the class was 20 year teachers. Yeah. And, and they were realizing, dude, I've been doing this a long time and I'm not getting the results I want. And so that's, I think, one of our favorite big things about this process is. I will say, though, to anyone interested. It's a process. Yeah. To anyone interested in, in getting, uh, learning more about edge protocols and, and taking any of these mini classes is uh, like me who went skeptical that there was going to be the value that was promised. Um you guys create a, an environment for us to be bad at it, for us to ask questions. I mean, you're here to say, Hey man, give me hard questions. I'm not, yeah. you're not afraid of hard questions. You're not going to hide behind some illogical rationale or something like that. And, or shrug your shoulders and say, well, that's just how it is. You're like, no, 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 this works. Here's why I've seen yeah. it. Uh, and that confidence as well as the group of people that also come and train. I mean, uh, it, it, it's just, it's a great place to go. If you want to be a little nervous about trying something new, um, cause I will admit, I, I, I went in person because I, I looked at the books and the books are great and super helpful, but I know for my personality, I need my hand held a little bit early on and then I can run with it. Well, and and that's are- one of the things that's why, and you heard us play this up too. Uh, we do like li- free lifetime tech support. And, and I'm going to be really, really straight with you, Alfredo, between the five books, there's about 70, like we would call documented edger protocols, right? Um, and there's probably another 50 variations. I can probably only do 20. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to tell you right now, when I go to do sous chef for the first time, I'm going to call Lisa and go, walk me through it. The first time I did Great American Race, I called Marlena. I don't get it. That's super normal, which is why we we love it when when people are reaching out to us. We freak out like it's like a new angel getting their wings. We're stoked because that means that somebody's going to try, and that's awesome, right? And they want to do it right, and uh, and I, I just I've been in that boat for people listening or watching. I've been the person reaching out and got a nothing but mm-hmm. positive support, and it's been. Um, it's been great. And it that's not the case with some of these other things I've looked into in yeah. my 20, 22 well, years. And that's because we're not a business. We're a movement. Yeah. Right. We're, our take our take is that we want to help other teachers be their best selves. And I didn't realize, Alfredo, as a first year teacher, I did not realize what teaching was. I I had no idea how much time I was going to spend coercing children. <laughs> to do worksheets i'm going to coerce you with points with caripo bucks with free pencils candy with lining up i'm going to co- it's coercion and the thing that's crazy about um the protocols approach is the kids no longer care about the incentives because once they realize that they're actually learning you got to now try to slow them down and you know, I have found when they are learning, they're ready for harder stuff. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. like, we get well, the they, basics. They they are, you know, you have the fixed mindset, growth mindset, right? The kids that we think have a fixed mindset are also playing uh, travel volleyball and travel right. soccer. They have a goat. They They work in their parents' business. They only have a fixed mindset about school. <laughs> So when we start teaching them that in my class, it is on and it is unlimited and it was equitable, everything changes. Everything changes. You've referenced coaching a couple of times. My favorite coach quote was, or still is, how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm-hmm. So don't go out there and be a, a always on time for club volleyball always have your gear, always wearing the right thing, always using the right language, and but then show up here without your book or without right. a pencil or yep. late. You know, how you do anything well, is how you do it. Here's everything. another little angle though. This is a subtlety because this is a this is a teach for justice class. Can I tell you a justice story? Sure. I went back to the classroom last uh, not last year, but the year before, at the height of COVID. 
And I did that because I'd been away from the classroom for about five or six years, not that long. But I realized the rest of my career is going to be coaching teachers. And I wanted to dip my foot in the water one last time with all the new tools in my toolkit. Remember my uh, tool shop I was talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. imagine if you had added a laser cutter and an <laughs> okay. eight foot lathe, all these things to your tools, but and you've only really talked about them. You've read the instructions, but you haven't really lived it. So I wanted to go back and lived it. I wanted that authentic authenticity. But now I'm gonna talk about justice and equity. The first day of school, there was a girl in my classroom I looked over at about, uh, I don't know, 11 o'clock. She had already used up my whole box of Kleenex. Mm -hmm. And the voice in the back of my head, the disaffected, uh, codependent Stockholm Syndrome voice said, you need to take action, John. And I said back to that voice, you just watch me take action. So I walked over to Stephanie and I said, Steph, is it going to be like this all year? What's going on? And she goes, Crippo, it's going to be like this all year. I have allergies. I am a leaky bucket. And I go, hold. So I type in to my phone. She goes, what are you doing? I go, oh, I'm talking to your mom. What mm -hmm. do you think she's thinking? She's in trouble. She's thinking she's in trouble, right? And my teacher voice is telling me, you can't let this one kid use up that much Kleenex. You need to stop this disruption all those things disruptive yeah <laughs> bro two hours later office calls stephanie's box is here stephanie go to the office why why just go to the office her mom has bought her an entire case of kleenex okay she walks into that room with a big old smile i go get over here with my sharpie and she writes Stephanie on the box. I go, don't be touching Stephanie's Kleenex. Do you see the difference there? Yeah. Well, yeah. How, how you show up is okay. I'm Whatever it, it is. And there's an epilogue. So later I look over and she's got this stack of Kleenex that's nine inches tall, right? <laughs> My teacher voice starts up again, creating a distraction. Not clean. We need to lecture her about cleanliness. Make her clean up her mess. And I, I gave basically, uh, this is an audio podcast, but I gave that voice the middle finger. And I quietly walked over and got a trash can. And I just put it by her desk. And I go, remind me to do this tomorrow. Yeah. It's not her fault yeah. that her nose is leaky. And I refuse to put her on the spot for that. I'm not going to do it. So that's where my heart is. And it's funny because um, I'm going to be really honest. In real life, I'm not always that nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's a 10-year-old kid. And she's my job. It's my job to get her the best possible year. And so I'm going to become a slave to whatever that means. And that doesn't mean I give up. It doesn't mean I'm not hard on kids. you know. But I'll tell you that that classroom, that year I went back, we had no suspensions. No referrals, no crazy parent meeting. When I met with Stephanie's mom, she said, are you going to be my kid's teacher next year? When I met with my SPED student, who was a whole other guy, are you going to be my kid's teacher next year? All they wanted was somebody to take care of their kids. Now, here's the best part. I'm academically greedy. I'm doing those things because it puts kids in a great place to be effective students, which is my real story, Right. That's all fun. It feels great. It's cool. But I'm in school for academic results. And that's the kind of, if you would, that's the bun on it. And we doubled our scores in language arts and quadrupled our scores in math in the middle of a pandemic. I think you and also that's said, how you do it. I think you also send a message to the other kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The fact that I handled Stephanie's problem. Which they so, were familiar with. They know Stephanie's, Stephanie's problem. They, they know, know Stephanie's her since problem. kindergarten. They know, they know, oh, my God, what's he going to do to her? Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's different. <laughs> that's that's different. And uh, the other thing I started off with, and, and you've been, how long have you been teaching? You said 21 years? Yeah. Okay. Guess how I started with my kids. I said this. You ready for this? 
I go, I'm going to be at some of your weddings. Sixth graders freaking out. Yeah. What? I don't even have a boyfriend. Yeah. My I son would have said, I'm not going to get married. I'm not going to get married. <laughs> I said, I'm going to be walking through the parking lot over at the mall 18 years from now. And you're going to introduce me to your kids. And they're like, oh, my God, they're freaking out. I go, I might adopt one of you because I have. I might perform your wedding because I have. Wow. And I'm going to treat you guys. I'm going to treat you guys with that respect all year because I don't want to run into you some year, 20 years from now go. That was the weirdo kid that I yelled at. I don't want to live like that. Some of you are going to come back and you're going to be my student teachers. I know it sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. Some of you are going to email me and say, Crippa, I just graduated from a big college. Some of you are going to email me 20 years and I'm going, Crippa, which MacBook should I buy? Which camera should I buy? It's just the product of 180 days together. We're going on a road trip, except we're not going anywhere. And I want to think well of you at the end of the year, and I want you to think of me as a resource. Don't worry. I have plenty of friends. I'm not trolling for friends. <laughs> but this is just one of the things that happens. When you spend 180 days with people, things like this occur, and it's okay. Well, this I think this is a good place for my next question because some people might hear that and say, I, I don't know that I could come at my students like that. I don't even know that I want that kind of relationship with, with students. Or they might be listening to you or watching this and saying, I, I don't have that kind of energy. I don't have that kind yeah. of vibe. Well, the first thing know? I'm going to say is you got to be you. That's like – I, it doesn't matter how much money I had. I can't train every teacher to be either Robin Williams or Aaron Gruel from Freedom Ride. You can't yeah. train people. Here's what you can do, though. Everybody can do this. Number one, be real. Kids can smell out fake like nobody's mm -hmm. business. Number two, be fair. You can do that. You don't have to be super entertaining or wacky uh, to engage kids. For me, it is a lot of fun to do all the fun things I want to do at school. But if you want to keep it a little straighter laced, that's okay. But you can still be fair. You can still be equitable. You can still be honest, and you can still engage the kids. Here's an angle on that, Alfredo. Okay. If your kid plays football for me, what are the odds that your kid has my cell number? These days, pretty good. If your kid's a cheerleader on my cheerleading team, what are the odds they have my cell number? These, and I'm saying these days. Yeah. Pretty right good. Now. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Uh, you're on my travel soccer team. You have my oh, cell def number? Definitely. Uh, you're in my FFA team. Yeah. If you're in my English class. That, yeah. I have. See, see how that goes off the cliff real fast? You know what? I don't think any of my students do, except I started a podcast club. Probably five kids in the podcast club do. But that that hadn't been a very normal thing. But for some reason, yeah, for podcast clubbers, yeah, I might need to text you. Here's my number. Don't give it out. Don't be weird. <laughs> yeah. And they're not. They never are. They're, they're not. Always. They're not. You know, at the school, we started a high school from scratch, which is a little easier because you kind of know everybody. Right. We got it up to 500 kids. We every kid gave had access to every teacher's cell number. Guess what happened? Nothing bad. Nothing. Right. <laughs> we really literally had teachers going, why did you guys text me on the weekends to let me know what's going on? Because <laughs> you're not that important, bro. You are not <laughs> that important. They do not care. Right. You know what I do get by giving out my cell number? I get stuff like this. Hey, Crippa, we're at the beach. Is this cool or what? What's wrong with that? Nothing. What's wrong with that? And guess what? If I'm worried about privacy, I can star 69 them. I can block them. I can screenshot yeah. them. Come at me, bro. Yeah. Come at me. You ain't going to do nothing to me. But the bigger thing is this. If I'm a youth pastor, I'm accessible. If I'm a coach... I'm accessible. And I'm fine if people say, well, I'd rather do that through Remind or um, Class Tag or Seesaw. 
I'm fine with people saying, I'm going to get a Google voice number. Those are free. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Hell, even get a burner phone. 20 bucks a month is a great time. Right. To have if a place for kids. Stressed, yeah. 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 And, 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 uh, this is what happens usually every year on Saturday night or Sunday morning. A kid will text me and say, I don't have the spelling words. And I will text them back and go, ask Jason. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to sit there and do five hour lessons. But, but the point is, the nonverbal is that I'm accessible. That's the trick. I'm accessible. I tried to do uh, review sessions during COVID at seven at night because kids weren't coming to the three o'clock one or the four o'clock right, one. Right, right, right. So I said, I'm going to try it. If no one shows up, then I won't do it anymore. And, yep. you know, three, then seven, because word gets out. It's very mellow. We're yep. just talking about this, but I was just trying to have an alternate opportunity for them. Right. Um, so overall, we've talked about a couple of pushbacks. Did I miss any major pushbacks that you've gotten over the years? You've been working on this, you said, for 20 years. Well, what, are, yeah. what are some of the major pushbacks you've gotten? Uh, probably the biggest one is the idea that... Um, if you're if you're saying I I'm not gonna be a slave to the workbook, what will the kids do? Like that's the one that people really get hung up on. And and let's really be honest, how many people do more than fifty percent of the work from the textbook? Most people I know are around fifty percent textbook and then fifty percent supplemental. Would you agree with that in general? Yeah, yeah. If not. You know, it, it could be 30%. More. Yeah. 30% yeah. textbook or even, so, I mean, yeah. So, so basically our system kind of works like this. Alfredo, you're a chef. Do you have a different signature breakfast every day of the year at your restaurant? You have 365. No, no, no. You've got your egg dishes. You've got your breakfast burrito. You've got your, um, you, you see where I'm going with this? You have your continental breakfast. You got about six setups, and that's your jam. And so that's the idea of protocols. What happens with the textbooks is they give us 180 of these worksheets, a different one almost every day, and the kids start getting more and more lost, which causes them to not believe that they're good students, and it causes you to look down upon them. And I think this is really by design, whether they realize it or not, yeah. because if you think about the kids that do well in your class, they do well in spite of the crappy textbook. They're willing to pray at the textbook altar because they're looking forward to an economic outcome. I Nobody found, likes yeah. the textbook just for the textbook. And they haven't gotten better over the years. Yeah. Uh, and I found history textbooks in particular – you know, they give you these quizzes with answer keys. The answer keys have so many mistakes. The answer keys have mistakes. It's, 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 and the kids are looking at you like, and I'm going, wait a minute, let me read that again. No, the answer key's wrong. And they're going, well, yep. how can we trust any of this? It's like, that's a great question, you guys. That's a fair question. Yeah. Uh, let's I just used to do this one on open ended questions. The textbook would say answers may vary. So the kids would read their answer and I go, no, it says right here, answers may vary. And that's yeah. you're wrong. <laughs> so with protocols, what happens is I get six or seven things going that I like. I get good at fast and curious. I get good at cyber sandwich. I get good at number mania. I get good at iron chef. I get good at thick slides and mini report. Now I'm like a chef, right? Seasonal fruits. It's not just a pancake day. I got strawberries. Right. So I'm keeping it fresh all the time. The kids always know what success looks like. And, and there you go, your lights again. There's, the kids always know what success looks like. And they always know what the game plan is. And what happens is, just like in football or baseball or softball or choir, we keep doing the same thing. Does anybody in choir ever say, man, we sang this song like five times right. this week. We sang those notes already. We say, <laughs> I know the B notes, right? So that's crazy in most disciplines. But in school, it's different worksheet, different worksheet, different worksheet. And what we're trying to do is make a modular setup. Same, and I'll, I'll extend the analogy to dinner. What do you expect when you go to dinner? You expect some apps. You expect some soup and salad. 
you've got a main, you got a couple starches, you got some sides, and you got a dessert. So we're thinking, how do we build that kind of a structure? For I've told that, things? yeah. And I, I mentored a new teacher through the district last year. And one of my, you know, big suggestions was, you know, students are going to expect certain things early. There's things in their mind that a good teacher does. Right. And you need to do those things. It's not no, a long don't. list. It's no, not a long don't. list. <laughs> but but in their brain, they want you, They in their mind, they think a good teacher does A, B, and C or whatever it is, you know? And uh, so you can't be way, way out there. But this stuff right. is... I just, I don't know. Yeah, it's familiar it, without being odd. Right. Does that make sense? No, it's, and it's great. And and it's disruptive. I, I wanted to get to the word disruptive here because I know we should wrap up soon. Because I sat across for one of the lunches, I sat across from Marlena, right? Your co-author here on the first book. I right. didn't know what she looked like because, oh. <laughs> because of the book. I thought she looked like this. Yeah, this was all that I had of her in terms of an image. So I didn't know it was her sweet lady. But when you get talking to her, she is a disruptor of traditional education. She, does, she doesn't look like it. She's no. like you said, she's not like me. She's very quiet. Yeah, uh, she's very orderly. And I don't mean those as negatives. I'm just saying <laughs> different than me. Right. Mm -hmm. But the thing we've got in the middle of our Venn diagram is disruptor. She's willing to say. I've been doing that for 18 years and it doesn't work. Right. I've tried it with 2000 kids and it is not getting the results. And when I make this twist and you're going to love this. So Marlena and I met at Mar uh, Mariposa County office of education. Um, I was the assistant soup and she was my Tosa. Okay. She spent six months pushing back. What about this? What about that? That's why I like What about her. this? Why do you do that? And she wasn't, just like you, she wasn't disagreeing. She was just asking all the hard questions. Mm -hmm. And so in a big sense, Marlene has helped me to explain to people why it works, right? So um, the probably the biggest thing that we do that's different is I'm not going to start by mansplaining. The act. I'm not going to do a 20-minute lecture on the Goths and the Visigoths. <laughs> Not, nobody cares bro right. uh, no, nobody cares if I want to do that I'll find a gim kit or a blue kit with about 20 questions and we'll just play for 10 minutes and we'll come out of that and we'll do a quick frayer what are three things you now know about goths what are th things that surprise you about goths where could you find goths and show three images of goths now we're cementing that learning Here, what's my prep time all right. I did was steal a book it. Right. <laughs> right. Because they're it. loaded. They're loaded. They're now. loaded. The or gim kits kit. are loaded. Yeah. And then I use a frayer. But last week, the first week of school, oh, look at my my hands are cool. They did like a ghost move. I'm like Tony Stark right now. Can you get um, my lights to turn on? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. So last week, we did a frayer on foods and pets and friends. So I already know the construct of a frayer. So now I'm just doing a better prayer. Next week, we're going to learn about uh, Caesar, and we're going to learn about Caesar's military history. I'm going to find me a gim kit or a quizlet with 15 or 20 questions about Caesar. We're going to play for 15 minutes, and then we're going to fray Caesar. Now, I'm oversimplifying it, but that's the jam. What are we going to do the next week, Alfredo? Just throw me something. New content, right? The Gauls, yeah. the Huns, yeah. whatever. The Gauls. There we go. It's Gull Week. Instead of Shark <laughs> Week, it's Gull Week. We're yeah. going to play that game every day for about 10 minutes. We're going to frayer one day. We're going to cyber sandwich one day. I'm going to very carefully track in real time what they're struggling with because that determines what we're going to Iron Chef on Wednesday to clear up misconceptions and push conceptual knowledge. Just like a football coach would. I've got my 50 defense. I've got my 40 defense. I've got Miami two. I've got my bear. I've you got, got your my tackle triple. circuit, your blocking circuit. Yeah. It doesn't change. And I just much. have packages. I just have yeah. the same packages. Now in that sense, I can keep my teacher's addition because that is like my schedule for the season. Here's where I've got to be. 
right. right? But I don't need to do all the worksheets because when I hand out worksheets, worksheets come back. When worksheets come back, I got I, gotta, them. I don't want to correct them. <laughs> And that's where no. I'm going to use, again, those tools. No, Word wall, I'm going to let the kids play for five minutes till everybody has an A. Tomorrow, we're going to play the same game, but I'm going to go today. You only got two minutes. You better get cracking because I'm going to make it harder to lock it in. And it's that easy. And then if everybody's got a 9.5 out of 10, what's my grading time? A, fill down. I'm done. Right. Without any guilt. No. They all without any. It. Here. No stars, no smiley faces, actual numbers. Yeah. And on the equity piece for my resource kids or my ELs, we're going to play that same game next week. We're going to play that game the next week. We're going to play that game the next week. And I guarantee you, dude, every time by the third week, some of those ELs are destroying the class. Because and, being yeah. an EL is not an intelligence thing. No. It is a communication thing. And once they figure out the game, they beat the crap out of us sometimes. And yeah. then we all appreciate that. Absolutely. hundred percent. And you, you just learn and other kids learn that, that it's accessible, which means it's fair. Well, Hey, I can tell you, I could talk to you all day, man. I appreciate you meeting you and, and, and the group and, and reading these books has been, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to overstate it. I, I, I listen to these podcasts and these guys gush over their, their guests or whatever they're talking about. Like it's an info, yeah, but we're not guests. We're peers. This is not um, a, a, an infomercial. This is not, uh, I'm not making this up. This is real stuff for teachers to make our lives easier. It's based in research. There is support for it. We're, I'm going to be spending, I can already tell I'm going to be saving time. My kids are going to be, my students are going to be learning more. It's not going to be boring. I want, I think people should check it out. It fits and aligns with Everything I'm trying to understand here about what does it look like to teach for justice in 2022 and be more effective, be more healthy. It's it's all of these things. Um, and here's so, what I'd like to challenge your listeners to. Here's here's my challenge. OK. What if somebody's listening to this and they've got new questions that you didn't think about or I didn't address? OK. I would love it if they would email them to you and let's do a follow-up show in a few weeks because you just went to the academy, right? Which yep. means you've got new learnings, right? Get out there and be your own guy for a few weeks. Test drive some of this stuff and let's do a follow-up in a month or two with some questions from your co-teachers or your friends and let them ask us questions and then we'll knock those out together because you're going to see these patterns emerge. i I sound so confident about this because it works every single time. Yeah. And I'll, I'll have probably more questions because I will be trying it. And uh, I think it'll be a, a very fruitful conversation. And again, it will be consistent with your pledge to provide support. Right. For life. Lifetime for life. support. Nobody talks like that. Right. And mm -hmm. what does it look and like? I, and I this do mean nights like and like. weekends. I don't mean support during business hours yeah and i'll tell you something that'll blow your mind right now when i was the assistant soup my goal for myself was to answer every teacher email within one minute of seeing it that was my goal for myself not within one minute of getting it within one minute of seeing it right because people need to feel acknowledged and i'm going to use technology to make people feel more connected not neglected. You, If you email your boss in any industry and your boss doesn't answer for five days, that leaves a pit in your stomach. I was a former head football coach. And if an assistant coach was checking in with me about something, yeah, I'd be immediate because it was important to me. Or if your starting quarterback says, where's the yep. game? Both. Yep. Yep. And, and that builds a culture and, and a self-esteem and an esteem between parties that is critical absolutely critical when a parent emails me on saturday at three i can choose to ignore that but what and it's fine i don't have to answer right. but depending on the nature of the question most of the time it serves me to answer it because if that parent is a not sleeping saturday night and in a bad mood sunday i'm gonna pay for it on monday and mm -hmm. i will simply email them and just say this I got this under control. I'll give you the details Monday. Right. I'm acknowledging I saw this. I don't have to write a four-page letter. Yeah. Yeah? 
No, no, he's going to be fine. We'll talk Monday. I got a plan. <laughs> don't worry. I don't have to write him a 10 paragraph essay. I don't have to, you know, I can just say, I got you because that's what people want to hear from the service industry. They want to yeah. hear, I got you. We're on it. All right. So I, I, I love to have the final question uh, for, for my guests be, be the same always. And so my final question for you is what does it mean for you? Or what does it mean to you to teach for justice? Um, I'm going to process that for a second. I would say, and I love your equity, love, and compassion. Um, I'm always going to think on compassion. I'm going to think if I was 10, how would I feel in this scenario? And I'm going to coach from there. Uh, love is, if you don't love the kids, please get out of the profession. Because if you're doing this robotically, you're not helping anybody. In fact, you're damaging people. Um, and then equity means a lot more than giving everybody a chance to me. Equity means believing in everybody. Mm -hmm. Equity means finding a way for everybody. Equity means giving them a similar outcome for the future to have choice. And so for me, teaching for justice is really the idea that, uh, and, and you're going to love this, the great way to close out here. I was an executive director of a, a large nonprofit on the West Coast. And we worked with a super expensive consultant to teach us about uh, the corporate culture, how to do this. And he said, you guys need to understand, people don't get in trouble at work. Mm -hmm. If they're doing something wrong, you train them better. And if they cannot do the work, you find another place in your organization or another organization. But you don't yell at them. They don't get in trouble. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to apply that in the classroom. What if I go in with an idea that kids don't get in trouble? Nobody gets in trouble. Right. I train them better or I put them in a situation where they can win. I can control all of that. So that's that's kind of my uh, teach for justice uh, crossover for you. Awesome. I love it. And I appreciate it. I appreciate you and Marlena and everybody uh, with the group that's trying to that's just trying to help us teach a safe time, be more effective. At the end of the day, those two things are all we really want. And, and not getting those things, I think, has been causing a lot of problems. My journey this year, looking at mm -hmm. how, you know, uh, politics and, and, and the recession have been affecting teachers. Uh, that's what I, you know, time, effectiveness, uh, is it rewarding? All of these things are, are being addressed by this. And, and I just uh, think people should check it out and, um, and, and, and check you guys out and, and, and benefit from it literally immediately. So thank you. I will hopefully talk to you soon. I'm very grateful for this. Heck yeah. John I'm here Carrico, for it, everybody. All right, buddy. I will see you very soon. Thank you. All right.